Thank you for having us here, and thank you for joining our talk today. Um, we are very excited to present Network ACL Made Easy, establishing zero trust network policies in a, like just a few clicks. I'm Juno, and here's Yonghui. Today, we're going to guide you through the process of setting up zero trust network policies efficiently and effectively. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Here's our bios and company bio thing. So uh, we're going to introduce ourselves and um, the expert expertise we bring to this topic. Our team at Theory has a strong background in the security innovation field, um, especially the offensive security thing. We have like over 70 wins in the international hacking competition, which is called the City App. Yeah, you can play the city app experience in the next um, room. And we also uh, won the most like um, greatest hacking competition, which is called DEF CON City App for like six times. And we also find some numerous vulnerabilities and reported across like various global vendors such as Google, Microsoft, Apple, and also the CNCF incubating project. Um, such as the Argo City and Kubernetes. Yep. And yeah, this is our one of the main topic. So what is zero trust? Zero trust, I think everyone knows about the zero trust. Yeah. Um, the security model, um, the zero trust security model is gaining traction as it shifts away from traditional parameter space security. Zero Trust architecture focuses on granular access control through two main components. The first one is network level ACLs, which is the simple firewall rules inbound and outbound traffic, and some additional authentication and authorizations. Yeah, we can um, do the authentication and authorization through the MTLS or access control, I, I mean the access tokens and the HTTP headers, or yeah, some layer seven authentication thing. But our presentation will focus on establishing network level ACLs, not the um, like layers sevens authentication or authorization. Okay, um, we're gonna focus on establishing network level ACLs, ACLs from scratch, which form the foundational framework of zero trust architecture. Oh, sorry. By the end of this session, um, I think you will get the first one you will be equipped to utilize network logs on the AWS infrastructure. And the second, set up like initial firewall rule sets. Um, in this case, this is the security group, groups on the AWS from scratch. And manage them using a Terraform back, Terraform back dashboard with some like Google spreadsheet thing. So um, this process is designed to ensure adequate automation and maintain performance from a UX perspective. Um, I think um, I can say it, it is more like developer, pers developer experience perspective or like security managers or security engineer perspective who doesn't know much about the infra infrastructure as a code or just some like random CLI thing because we're gonna use spreadsheet to like um, <coughs> making the security rules and like inbound and outbound rules things. And um, finally, it will help you understand your like your teams and your company's current network security postures on the AWS infrastructure and lay the foundation for continuous monitoring and rules updates. And yeah, I think everyone else in the room might be like, wondering why we have to make a security group, who ma making a security group bull says in AWS infrastructure automatically, automatically. So this is our like motivation and our like um, team's goal on the project. Yeah, because yeah, we do the cybersecurity consulting, um, focus on the offensive security one. But yeah, one of our customer um, it was trying to obtain a Cybersecurity Compliance Certification in South Korea. 
So um, they encounter two main issues. The first one is constructing fine-grained inbound and outbound rules from scratch. Um, it's a little bit funny on our like international standards, but in South Korea, um, the question of the does the company has a proper pipeline or a system to manage their network security is the major criteria of the compliance certifications. Even the AWS or the Kubernetes stuff. Also, yeah, even the outbound rules. And the second one is um, they have to map the firewall rule, set, rule, cells, rule sets for 500 instances among the uh, multiple AWS accounts. So they were like struggled with maintaining and making rule sets among, the, among these 500 instances. So it contains the Kubernetes nodes and even just like um, monolithic EC2 instances. So the first challenge what we um, encounter was addressed um, by analyzing traffic to automatically generate initial rule sets. And the second one is tackled by introducing an infrastructure as code solution with a unified dashboard for easier management. In this case, the unified dashboard is the spreadsheet. Um, <clears throat> as you know, if the company uses a Kubernetes infrastructure only, um, I think it is easy to like, manage their network policy and network rule sets because there are a lot of like, good solutions such as like Calico, Armo, Assistic, or Solo IO. Yeah, they're also in the showcase room, so you can find out them. Yeah, uh, by using that, you can easily pre-populate the network policies based on the network traffic and the Kubernetes clusters. Um, however, in our case, the clients also heavily uses the AWS only um, infrastructures like the EC2, as I mentioned, and some like RDS thing. So um, we have to analyze the AWS's tra uh, the traffic among their like AWS infrastructures. So um, after this talk, it will be very helpful if your team or your company uses the hybrid system, which um, is using the Kubernetes and AWS infra in the uh, same time. Yeah, um, this is our agenda, which is how we solve these problem and challenges in like, um, and finally we made some like open source thing that um, everyone can easily establish their security groups and security rules in just a few clicks. Oh, um, okay, so the first part is how, I'm, I'm gonna show how we analyze traffic inside the AWS architecture. And second one, um, I'm gonna say how, how we create and test viral rule sets uh, among the 500 instance. And the third one is, yeah, attach rule sets to all AWS in instances over like 500 EC2s and RDS and other like load balancers. Thing. And finally, um, also discuss some like gotchas and optimizations for using Terraform and like AWS infrastructures. Yeah, it will be very fun. So all source codes are available, avail available on our GitHub after this talk. So you can yeah, check out. <clears throat> okay, um, the, um, the first thing, analyze the AWS traffic. Yeah, we have um, the feature, the AWS has a feature to <coughs> make the users can analyze their traffic among their instances, which is called VPC, VPC flow logs. So it is a feature that enables you to capture information about the IP traffic going to and from network interfaces in your like VPC. So if you want to capture the all um, traffics among the VPCs, then you have to enable um, the VPC flow logs for the every VPC. VPC. Um, <clears throat> and it can be sent to like AWS CloudWatch logs or even the S3 or the data firehose. 
we chose S3 for faster iteration and cost efficiency. And we collected VPC logs for seven days because we didn't have much time to like finish this work. So yeah, seven days is like okay to us. And sync them into an like isolated machine because of the security purpose. And established a new tooling framework based on the data set. <coughs> um, we requested like 67 gigabytes of logs recorded for seven days. Someone might, be, might think that, yeah, 67 gigabytes for seven days is not that much, but yeah, for us, it is like hard to analyze the entire logs like within the seconds or minutes because 67 gigabytes is also like huge for us. And this is the compressed thing. So if we just un decompress the 67 gigabytes, it becomes around one terabyte. Yeah, so it's huge. <coughs> and <coughs> what we did is by compressing the logs and grouping them by IP slash port, we reduced the size to one gigabyte. I mean, the VPC flow logs is just text-based thing, so we have to optimize in like um, some data structures that we can easily control and manage and like manipulate. <coughs> so we wrote a VPC flow log parser and aggregator in Rust. So it <coughs> we have to like process around like 20 million lines per second. So um, here's how we created the VPC flow log, uh, log parser. So first we aggregate the CSV files, which is the output of the VPC flow logs, and split each column, then group by IP slash port. Yeah, it's super simple. The format, you, uh, um, as you can see, it includes like source address and destination address and yeah and other things. Like um, to, we, we have to leverage our like multiple core servers because we have like, um, like 200 core servers in, uh, in house. So we converted a for loop to like for underscore each and then into use, use the into par iter, which is the um, Rust multi-core libraries rayons feature. So um, it helps a lot to us to um, make a multi, uh, multi process program to parse the um, millions of million lines of code uh, logs. So here's the simple demo video that parses like 20 million, like hundreds of millions lines per like seconds. Yeah, we'll see. Just using the cargo. Yeah, we just parsed over like 80 million thing in just few seconds. And yeah, I'm gonna hand the mic over to Yonghee next as the upcoming slides will delve deeper into the technical aspects. So yeah, here's Yonghee. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, thanks, Juno, for the uh, great intro. Um, next, we'll discuss about creating firewall, firewall rule sets using our dashboard and local simulation. Um, we are introducing a new dashboard. In this slide, we are comparing the current and desired state of rule set management. In fact, AWS UI is not very useful when it comes to managing many security groups in many instances. To update one security group, we should visit pages back and forth between instances, network interfaces, and security groups. To manage this, we typically introduce IAC solutions like Terraform. Uh, we, went one, uh, we went one step further by writing unified dashboard. We picked spreadsheet as a proof of concept, which still gives some level of interactivity and visualization. To create initial rule sets, we first wrote a SQL-based script that shows traffic not covered by our rule set. The initial one is empty, so it'll show all traffics. 
Then we convert these logs into a spreadsheet-based dash dashboard, which serves as our proof of concept. We'll see it on our next slide. Building the rule sets consists of three steps. First, we write rule sets on a spreadsheet based on, uh, based on the given spreadsheet template. Then we connect them to AWS resources using names. We also support wildcard-based name matching. And then we also have variable sheet uh, expanded in later stages. Once we build the rule sets, we test them locally. In, it involves simulating the new rules to see which connections are still dis, uh, disallowed. The third step is applying the firewall rule set to actual instances. We deploy, a, uh, we deploy secret groups with Terraform to each instance. First, we convert the rule sets into Terraform configs, and then use Terraform CLI to apply them to AWS instances. To unload config into AWS, we first run the Terraform plan command, which compares, them, uh, which compares the Terraform config with the current state in AWS. Then the Terraform CLI records required actions into a zip file. Then we run Terraform apply which executes the actions from the plan. It involves invoking AWS APIs from the plan to actually add security groups to the given AWS account. So why use Terraform? Well, we can directly invoke AWS APIs from the list of rules sets, like using Boto library from Python. The reason was that we can delegate state management to Terraform without ad additional coding efforts. Terraform automatically compares the local config with the actual status in the cloud, so it makes us easy to write our POC. So let's move on to the demo showcasing the process from the spreadsheet to Terraform and then to AWS. So the rule set is populated from the spreadsheet, and the plan is run, and the actual group is added to AWS. After creating the rule sets, we attach the new security groups and remove the old ones by generating a list of AWS CLI comments. Different comments are uh, executed for EC2, RDS, and ELB instances, ensuring that security groups are correctly uh, attached to each type of resources. During the build, simulation, and apply loop of security groups, our goal is to achieve some level of compliance. We first verify that our security groups are correctly attached to all instances. Then we check that there are no rough rule sets anymore so that all subnet masks in the rule set become fine-grained enough. We wrote some post-check scripts to help verifying these requirements. If all checks pass and everything works, our job is done. Now let's discuss some gotchas and troubleshooting process uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout applying our POC. Also, we applied one hack to Terraform to make the iterations much faster. So what could go wrong with the, uh, in the process? When implementing the POC, there is always a risk of things being broken. For example, if our assumptions, uh, some of our assumptions are incorrect or, some, uh, or there are some implementation bugs, then some instances could go down immediately. Uh, fortunately to us, our client had staging and development environments. This allowed us to test and apply our framework gradually, starting, for, uh, starting with the dev staging and the production stage. Also, this approach enabled us to conduct some scream tests. It is uh, applying changes, getting feedback, and fixing issues before moving to more critical environments. Uh, after all, it took us uh, 17 bug fixes to get everything working smoothly. 
Uh, we encountered three major issues during our implementation. First, we discovered that only up to five security groups are allowed per AWS, instance, uh, AWS interface. Second, we had difficulty determining whether a connection in the flow log was from a client or a server. Um, and the final one is our deployment process in the iteration was too slow. Let's look at each of these issues and how we address them. So the first problem, our initial plan was to create one, secu one AWS security group per given rule set group uh, as sh shown here in the spreadsheet. However, we quickly hit a limitation. AWS only allows a maximum of five security groups per network interface. To work around this, is uh, this issue, we modified our approach. So instead of uh, dividing the rule set group into one security group, we combined multiple groups into one security group per instance. Then we attach it them to its corresponding instance in a one-to-one -one relationship. While this solved our immediate problem, it's worth noting that we are still limited to uh, about 300 rules per instance, uh, using five security groups in total. The second problem was, uh, this is a parser issue. So we should check if the source address in our VPC flow logs points server or client to make a proper server-side rule set. The pro problem is that the VPC flow log format doesn't distinguish between client and server, like this log here. Also, the first log per connection is not guaranteed to point the client to server connection. So to solve this issue, we implemented a set of heuristics to determine the source address is server or client. So first, for TCP connections, we can use the TCP flex field and the flow log. Uh, by looking for the SYN flag to identify the initiator, we can identif identify the specific log is uh, for the client or for the server. Second, we assume that source ports above a specific port uh, were likely initiated by clients. Because they are assigned as a ephemeral port range, and it is around uh, 30,000 uh, 30, in a Linux. Um, we also assume that the more heavily used port between source and uh, destination port was more likely to be a server server port. Uh, using these heuristics, we swapped source and destination uh, on aggregation stage to make the VPC flow aggregation consistent. Uh, one caveat of this approach is that some network, uh, network scanners uh, that uh, scan some vulnerability uh, to the externally faced interfaces set their source port to some known ports, ports like uh, 80 and uh, 443, which is the HTTP server port. So we had to be caref careful with this heuristic because we can wrongly add some scanner host uh, if we don't take this, uh, take this account. Um, our final major issue was slow deployment speed. After finding that our initial heuristics were insufficient, we needed to add or remove more firewall permissions based on customer's feedback. Then we found that the Terraform plan command went much slower than we anticipated. For example, if we add 50 rule sets from 1,000 rule sets, Terraform would make 1,000 lookup requests to AWS and 50 generated requests. Uh, however, Due to AWS side rate limit, this could delay deployments by about 10 minutes. It's worth noting that this issue has been known since 2017. It's still an open issue. 
in Terraform because it requires a structural, a structural change to Terraform itself. To address the slow deployment speed, we asked ourselves, can we reduce those query requests? Uh, uh, can, can we re reduce this query request into one request? The idea is that you can actually get all 1,000 security groups at, at once and filter them locally. So we created a caching layer to Terraform by introducing an HTTP proxy between Terraform and AWS. Uh, we internally call this to AWS Terraform Boost uh, and it reduces a 9,899 query request here. Um, at this point, I'd like to demonstrate this tool in action, showing how it speeds up the Terraform plan process. So first, we run the Terraform plan without, the, uh, without our boost proxy. We first run the plan command uh, for 30 seconds. But even after 30 seconds, the plan command still does not end. It is because of the AWS rate limiting. So, yeah, we just interrupted the command and rerun the plan stage with, the, uh, with our proxy. Then the plan step gets much faster. And after a few seconds, the plan stage completes and shows the required action to us. So let's wrap up. We'll discuss what we didn't like and how can we improve during the POC stage. So here's an overview of the entire system. First, we start by collecting VPC flow logs into S3 buckets. Then we analyze this traffic data, grouping it by IP and port using our Rust-based program. Next, we build and simulate our rule set using spreadsheet. And then we import this rule set into Terraform, generating TF configuration files. Finally, we apply these configurations to our instances using Terraform, accelerated by our AWS Terraform Boost tool written in Go language. The whole process allows us to go from road network logs to implement secret groups in a structured, efficient manner. While our solution uh, might be effective, uh, it does have some limitations. First, uh, the IP address keeps changing. Uh, it, this affects both internal IPs in VPC and exter external IPs. Uh, for example, for the internal IPs, AWS uh, has a feature called auto-scaling groups, which creates the instances um, uh, automatically in uh, VPC. And uh, for the external IP case, uh, there, uh, there are some changing uh, inbound address when we use some proxy solutions like Cloudflare. And for the outbound, uh, for the outbound connection, if the client uses a domain-based connection that does some DNS lookup and gets the IP address and then connects, then the IP address can change. To work around this issue, uh, for external IPs, we can manage external IPs in domain level. So, uh, AWS Firewall actually supports this, but it is much more expensive for, uh, than the secret group. So for this, uh, for this POC, we don't this manually using the variables. Uh, so if the uh, referred domain is updated, the variable sheet is updated, and then the new rule sets are applied. Uh, for the internal IP, uh, there are two solutions. First is using the secret groups as source and destination address. Uh, AWS supports this, and it allows fine-grained network ACLs without specifying internal IPs. If it is not possible somehow, like it is cross-subnet uh, cross or cross-account, um, cross 
the corresponding subnet can be specified instead. Uh, looking ahead, we see several areas for potential improvement from our work. First, our aggregator could be replaced with some uh, COTS ETL solutions like Snowflake, ClickHouse, and DuckDB instead of uh, manually writing the Rust programs. Uh, because, they, uh, because they support CSP as the data source, uh, I think it, ca it can actually work. And more resource types can be supported at, in the Boost tool. Currently, we only support security group rules resources. Then for the dashboard, uh, currently we are using Google Spreadsheet, but I think we can add some fancy UI instead of using uh, the spreadsheet. And we need to address the maintenance, cost, uh, maintenance cost of our one-to-one -one aggregated security groups. Uh, they are actually not fully compatible with some um, existing security workflows. Like uh, there are a bunch of security rule set will, uh, uh, that is created for security, uh, security group. Uh, they are all expanded and applied per instance. That might be not very convenient for some manual fixes after this. Ideally, uh, each of the rule set could be port, uh, can be ported into connections between security groups instead of IPs. Five, we can further uh, reduce S3 cost by using S3 BPC endpoint. Um, for the initial POC, we pulled uh, all of the VPC flow logs from S3 to our uh, isolated machine outside the, cloud, uh, outside the AWS cloud, and it will cost some bandwidth cost. But by using S3 VPC endpoint, uh, the cost will greatly reduce. And recently, AWS introduced a notion of a zero ETL. Uh, uh, and it says that there are some zero, uh, zero copy way of uh, constructing the ETL from directly from S3, and we can compress the compress uh, 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 and we can store the compressed logs, uh, which is aggregated by the Rust script for use, reuse. Um, that's it for our presentation. Uh, thank you for listening.